praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Let's give God a high praise today. We can join me and help me say it. Let's do it. family. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. I pray that you have had a wonderful week thus far and that you are anxiously awaiting to see what God has to share with us on tonight. I pray that you enjoy our praise and worship as well. Uh, as I've said before, man, sometimes I just need to hear from God and doing so I need to praise and worship who he is and what he has been in my life. Amen. But family, on tonight, not to belabor our time, uh, there's so much that I'd like to share with you, but there's one thing that I really need for you to hear on tonight. Um, and that's something that I believe that all of us, whether you've been a Christian for a short period of time or whether you've been a Christian for a long period of time, I believe that this scripture is going to speak to you. Because listen, can we be real about it? As I've always said, I try to be as transparent as I can, especially when it comes to ministering to God's people. Uh, but we all have issues. And there are, when we all have times in our lives to where we go through wondering if God hears us. We go through life wondering, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I living this life when it seems as though everything is coming at me? And all of those people that are out there that don't go to church, they don't serve in ministry, they don't love, they don't give, and yet they seem to be happy. Why is it that I'm doing all of this? And they're not. But yet 
it seems as though they're not having any issue. Well, that's not, those aren't bad questions. And, and listen, whether we want to verbalize them or not, the Bible so eloquently says he knows our hearts. So while you may not say it, God hears you. So I want to talk just a little bit on tonight. We're going to go back into the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Old Testament Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Uh, if you don't know where that is, go to the table of contents. Uh, if, the, if you don't want to use the table of contents, use your electronic device and look it up. It's in the Old Testament. But Jeremiah 29 and 13. Oh man, it's going to this is going to just blow your mind. Some of you probably have heard this text, but some of you haven't. But for those of you that haven't, let me share with you what God has to say on tonight. He says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Wow. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And just for a few minutes, I just want to utilize that as a topic of our discussion on tonight, loving God wholeheartedly. And if, you, if it makes it easier for you to say, just say loving God with all of my heart. Pray with me. Father, we thank you now for another blessed opportunity to come before you, Father. We praise you for this day and this evening, Lord. We praise you for, for, for this opportunity to not only get it right, but we praise you for a, accepting our apologies, repenting of our sin, and you saying that they are forgiven. And not only do you forgive us, Lord, you said in your word that you would forget them as far as the east is from the West. So I say thank you, Lord, for, for, for loving us enough to forgive us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to die for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us to stay in the grave. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to get up on that great third day morning with all power in your hand that we might have this most blessed opportunity to come before you. Now, now, Lord, you know our prayer list. Father, there are many on the prayer list, but I pray now specifically for the Harris's, Father, Marie and Linda Harris. I, I pray specifically for, for Gloria Moore, Father. I pray specifically, Lord, for Stephanie Edwards, Lord. I pray specifically, Lord, for Marie Sanders, Father. I pray specifically, Lord, right now, in the, in the name of Jesus, Father, uh, 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 for little Messiah, Father, uh, baby Messiah, I pray now in the name of Jesus, Father, uh, 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 for Brendan, uh, Brendan Mack, I, I pray specifically, Father, for Lucy Abrams, and I lift up my family to you as well, Lord, Diane and, and Charles and Trina and Darius and my mother, Doris. And Father, I just thank you because I know that while I pray, Lord, you are yet already answering. So have your way, Father, tonight. And Lord, we'll, and show us through your word what you would have us to hear. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful and ever so careful to give your name glory on and all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Well, family, have you ever looked for something that you've lost? You find yourself retracing your steps, trying hard to remember when, when you last saw what it is that you lost, and yet you find yourself coming up empty. You've gone back to every place you've been. You've searched your car. You've searched the sofa. You've searched the bed, the bathroom, and you still can't find what it is that you're looking. Well, but... I believe that maybe it's because you're really not engaged and maybe you're just really going through the motion. You're walking where you think you've been, but you're really not looking. You're really not searching. You're just kind of going over. Have you ever been there? I know I have. 
Or how about when you're with someone and you're having a conversation, you find yourself there, but you're really not. If you're a brother, don't it? Like I'm by myself. Our lady friends, our wives, our girlfriends, our booze, whatever you want to call them, they're talking to us and, and we're supposedly talking to them, but really with someone else, with, with somewhere else. You remember that OJ song, Your Mind, Your Body is Here with Me, but Your Mind <laughs> is on the other side of town. You remember that? Yeah. And you think that you're pulling it off till they ask you that one question. What did I say? What did I just say? Then you got to confess that you really weren't listening at all. Have you been there? Or here's a better example. You're on the phone with someone and, and they're explaining something to you. And they've gone to in great detail when suddenly you erupt and say, hey, listen to this. And they sit there in amazement because they were talking to you. And yet your mind was someone somewhere else. You were looking at your phone or maybe you were looking at your iPad or your laptop. And, 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 and while they were talking to you, you were engaged in something else. And because you really didn't hear what they were saying, and now something has grabbed your attention, you shout out to them, let me tell you something, and you interrupted them. And why? Because you really weren't there with them wholeheartedly. Have you been there? <sighs> Can I be honest with you? There have probably even been times when I'm reading my Bible. But when I get to the end of the passage, I don't even remember what I've read. I know I'm not by myself. I know some of you saying, Pastor, you, you know, that's your job, Pastor. You a preacher, Pastor. You're supposed to be at a different level than we are. That shouldn't be happening to you. Well, listen, I'm going to use that well-corned phrase, I'm just human. And sometimes I get distracted. And let me tell you something. The Bible says that Satan, he roams the earth going to and fro, looking whom he, whom he can devour. Listen, he's always there to distract us. And it doesn't matter if you're a preacher, a teacher, a deacon, a, 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 a just a bench member. Satan is trying to distract us from having our whole concentration, our heart, on what we're doing for God. It's possible. It's possible, family, to do many things half-heartedly. And if we were to be honest about it tonight, a whole lot of us do things half-heartedly. Maybe that's why God tells us that we ought to trust him with our whole hearts. And according to Proverbs 3 and 5, he understood and he, and, and he wanted us to understand that, that, that that's going to be a job, that that can be a struggle to, 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 to love him and to trust him with everything we have. Yeah. In Psalms 139, David describes how, how fully God knows him. He says, God knows our thoughts before we even verbalize them. And not only does he know our thoughts, but he knows our every movement. God studies us. It doesn't matter that there have been millions and billions of people. God studies every one of us. How do I know that? Because the Bible says that he knows every hair on our head. He knows everything that's going through our minds. He knows our hearts. Not only does he know our hearts, he knew us before we were even conceived in our mother's womb. That's how well he knows us. 
And God is always learning, leaning in rather, to hear even the words we whisper. Let me help somebody because somebody, you, you think God doesn't know. You think God doesn't care. You think God is not listening to you. But let me share something with you. The Bible says that he even knows the moans and the groans of our hearts. That's what this loving God that we serve, this our Father, he doesn't want to miss a thing about each and every one of us. He knows us wholly. And God tells us in Ephesians 2 and 10 that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. He knows us. The Bible also says David was called a man after God's own heart. And I believe that maybe that was because David sought the Lord with his whole heart. Understand something, family. David wasn't perfect. Yes, David made mistakes in his life. But when he did, he knew where to go. He went to God. And I'm telling each and every one of you tonight, listen, God knows your heart. And God wants you to know that he knows that you're going to mess up. He knows that we have faults. He knows that we have issues. But he wants us to love him so much that when we do mess up, he wants us to come to him. He wants us to confess our sins. And he wants us to love him so much that when we do mess up, that we begin to grieve. And we come to him. Sometimes when we blow it, can we be honest about it tonight? We don't go to God. No, we don't. We try to hide our sins. We, we try to hide the incidents in our lives. And yet eventually, we come to the realization that there is no place that we can hide from God. Have you ever tried to hide from God only to come to the, only to find out that everywhere you go, God is there. You tried to go and, and hide yourself in drugs, but God was there. You try to go and hide yourself in alcohol, but God was there. You try to go and hide yourself in promiscuous living, yet God was there. You try to go and close yourself up in a room, turn off the lights, draw the curtains, get under the cover, only to find out that God is right there. You can't hide from God. God is omnipresent. And even the dark won't hide us. Why? Because God is light and there's no dark. In God. So if you if you be in Christ and Christ be in you, don't you know right now you cannot hide your sin, but he wants you to love him so much that you come to him with not just some things, but you come to him with everything. Let me help somebody tonight because one of the things that I love to do, I love to drive. And one of the things that I love to I love to drive to and from church, from my house. It's about a 49 mile drive, and, but, but during this drive, especially when I'm alone, I start thinking about ministry and, and I have opportunity to think about life. I think about my family and, and my friends. I, I think about how I've been blessed and, 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 and because I know without a shadow of a doubt, I don't deserve to be in the position that I'm in. I don't deserve to have the life that I have. I don't deserve to, to, to the respect that God has afforded me. I don't deserve uh, 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 the privileges that I have. But and, and, and that's because I base it on my past. I base it on the things that I've done. But watch this. But when I think about all that I've done, I start thinking about the goodness of God and the favor that he's placed in my life. And when I do that, I become grateful. And it's during those times, family, that I feel especially close to the Lord. And it's during those times of uninterrupted solitude that I feel that I've, I've given him all of my attention. And it's during those times that I once again feel that I truly love him with my whole heart. And I love him 
not just because of what he's done, but I love him that because he's loved me with everything he has. He loved me with his whole heart. I know this because my Bible tells me that on one Friday evening, he allowed himself to be hung on the cross. On one Friday evening, he, he allowed them to berate him. He allowed them to gamble over his clothes. He allowed them to place a thorn on his head. He allowed them, hello somebody, he allowed them to put a spear in his side and he, and, and he allowed the ghost of his spirit to be released from his body. He, family, he died because he loves me with everything that he has. But he, but he proved it even more because my Bible also says on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And when I think about that, when I think about the goodness, when I think about how much he loves me, I began to pray. And I begin to let him know what's on my heart. And, and sometimes, family, oftentimes, I'll end up singing. And you know I can't sing. But, I'm, but it's funny because I want to sing. And then I come to realize that even on hard days when my heart has been burdened, I arrive at my destination feeling better. And why is that? Because each and every opportunity that I have to praise him, each and every opportunity that I have to think on his goodness, each and every opportunity I have to think on his love for me, each and every opportunity that I can begin to think on the favor that he's placed in my life, I further learn how to love him, not just with some, but with all of my heart. And I pray that tonight you can come to the realization as well. Because he loved you with everything he has. That you in turn can love him with everything you have. Family, you're going to mess up. Yes, you are. We all the Bible says, for we all sin and we will all come short of his glory. But the Bible also tells me that while we were yet sinners, yes, he died for you and for me. And family, if he can love me that much, I can love him with everything that I have. Amen. Well, family, I pray that something was said that helped you on tonight, encouraged you to get your walk in, in order so that you can love him the way he loves you. Will you pray with me? Father, we once again thank you for another day, another opportunity, Lord, to get it right. We are so appreciative for your love. We're so appreciative of opportunity. I just pray now in the name of Jesus that you would bless us all. Touch now in the name of Jesus. And Father, if there be one that don't know you, I pray for their salvation on tonight. I pray that they be released and I pray that they, Father, will find that in, in you and only in you and they find salvation. We thank you. We love you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Well, family, thank you so much again for all that you've done. We are so appreciative that you chose to share with us on tonight your time. I pray that something was said or done that will help you. And please know this. Not only does God love you with everything he has, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. Have a wonderful evening. I look forward to seeing you on this Sunday, 9 o'clock for Sunday school, 10 o'clock for our, our regular worship hour. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day.